All right. Um, yes, you're so, good. Okay. Um, so this is uh, Department of Chemistry, Biology, and Health Sciences. Um, we are, uh, as a department, we are actually a relatively new department. And this is, the department started uh, a few years ago as, well, a long time ago, it's Department of Chemistry. Then we have a, a biology component. Uh, it's got, uh, it was called Department of Chemistry and Applied Biological Sciences. In 2019, uh, we started a, a per-professional health science program and so the department name now is changed to chemistry, biology, and uh, health sciences. We're going to start with uh, sort of an overview of the department and in terms of the uh, degrees and programs we have. In, on the chemistry side, uh, we have a ACS, American Chemical Society approved uh, bachelor degree of science in chemistry. Uh, last, since last fall, uh, we started a new master program uh, in green and sustainable chemistry. The department also offers biochemistry specialization under the uh, BS degree in chemistry. And we ha also have a chemistry minor as well. On the biology side, uh, we have a bachelor degree of science in biology, and we offer a minor in biology as well as a minor in environmental science. Uh, the health science program is called uh, per-professional health sciences. So that's a, a bachelor of science degree in per-professional health sciences. And so we start uh, sort of with chemistry program. Uh, our chemistry program uh, has been approved by ACS uh, since 1950s. And uh, recently this year, we just successfully passed our five-year periodic review from 2016 to 2021. So we'll continue ACS approved uh, program. Uh, in the chemistry program, something relatively new is uh, we started to offer a specialization in biochemistry that is started in 2020. And that uh, essentially uh, for students who are interested in using their chemistry knowledge to study biology uh, system. And so in that specialization uh, curriculum wise, uh, the specialization requires 13 credit hours of biology courses. Uh, right now we're in the process to get approved for specialization in green chemistry. Uh, this is more or less aligns with um, some of the new direction in the department, which is related to green chemistry and environmental chemistry as well. Um, I got a, a message in chat ask about chemical engineering. Um, as far as I know, I came here in uh, 2006, and uh, at that moment, at that time, chemistry and chemical engineering, uh, they are split into two departments. Uh, right now, the chemical engineer is called chemical and biological engineer, and they have a bachelor degree in chemical engineer, a master degree in chemical engineer, and a PhD in chemical and biological engineer. Uh, so back to our uh, department and in the specialization in green chemistry, uh, we're going to require 18 credit hours uh, of uh, re curriculum related to environment, sustainable energy, and materials chemistry. Now, overall, in the past uh, five years, um, our student placement is about 91%. Uh, majority of a student, about 58% of students go to graduate school, medical school, or professional school, and uh, about a quarter of students go to industries, and then 20% of them go to healthcare-related field. Um, say a little bit about the uh, master program in green and sustainable chemistry. Uh, so this is really a program that is uh, that is uh, that aligns with some of the research effort in the department, specifically in 
uh, renewable energy, uh, energy storage, as well as the environmental uh, envir environmental science related uh, research. So the, the program uh, is in the broad area of chemistry and of biology that is related to green and sustainable science and technology. And the degree requires about 30 credit hours. And uh, uh, we have a thesis and non-thesis option. And the student at the school minds also can take accelerated master program, uh, which is, um, uh, which, which enables the student to get a master degree, uh, bachelor and a master degree in uh, approximately five years. Again, this is related to some of the research efforts in the department um, in, the, in the field of uh, sustainable energy and materials, uh, environmental science and health, as well as the uh, biotechnology and biomaterials. On the biology side, um, so now this is the um, Bachelor of Science in Biology. The name change started in 2019. And, and the program started as, as a BS in Applied Biological Sciences. Uh, this is a rather unique biology program with a very focused area in molecular biology and microbiology. So in the sense that we, uh, our biology curriculum does not, in, uh, does not include uh, anything related to plants or, or animals. So they're main, mainly on molecular and cellular level of biology. Uh, curriculum wise, um, you know, in, we have general education requirement, math and physics requirement. Our biology program is um, also chemistry heavy and it actually requires 25 credit hours of chemistry classes and labs. Then we have uh, biology core requirements as well as the uh, biology uh, elective requirements. And those are the uh, list of the courses uh, that approved by the program as electives. Uh, there are a few emphasis areas uh, in our biology program. Uh, we have a pre-med emphasis, uh, we have an environmental science emphasis, molecular biology, and biomedical engineering emphasis there. Uh, if you look at the student placement, the biology program uh, in the past five years, uh, the biology program has 94% of student placement. And again, majority of the, our students go to uh, graduate school, medical school, and, and the professional schools. And then the rest of them uh, go to healthcare field or uh, industry. If you look at health science program, the BS of per professional health sciences started in 2019. Uh, this is a, a, a flexible degree that prepares students for professional schools, okay, for healthcare related professional schools. So it's the, in terms of the curriculum, it has a, a lot of flexibility that allows students to take multidisciplinary electives and supporting uh, support courses. And uh, so they, the program also can tailor the curriculum to a specific healthcare career that interest for, uh, for the students. So if you look at the requirements here, um, beyond general education, math and physics requirement, it has about 34 credit hours of biology and chemistry requirements. Uh, the, major the majority of the courses in that requirement are biology courses. Then we require 12 credit hour upper level science electives and nine credit hour of support uh, electives. Uh, these are uh, should be social science or humanity uh, courses. And there's large uh, portion of free electives that student can use to tailor towards the uh, specific uh, professional school they're interested in. So that's, uh, this is a relatively new uh, program, and this is actually a program that we have a uh, large increase of student enrollment in the past two years. I'm um, so going to move on to um, the faculty and staff in the department. Um, 
you uh, may see a, a lot of new faces uh, in the, which is uh, we have new faculty in the past few years. Uh, just myself, um, I'm a department head and associate professor in chemistry. Uh, myself, I'm a material chemist. I came here in 2006 as an assistant, as a tenure track assistant professor, and started uh, as an interim department head in 2019, and became the department head in, or well, interim department head in 2020, then became the department head in 2021. And Dev Tompkins is our uh, senior secretary. And uh, she's been in school minds for more than 35 years. So she knows a lot of alumni and uh, former students. Uh, we have a lab coordinator and instrument specialist uh, on the chemistry side, uh, Doreen uh, Schwartz. And he's in charge of the preparation for chemistry labs, as well as the instrumentation uh, of the department. On the faculty side, um, Peter Adcock is our physical chemist. He's a, uh, he's a senior lecturer in the department. Uh, Brian Bars is our biologist, um, biochemist. He teaches biochemistry and he joined the department uh, last fall. So he's a, a new faculty in the department. Uh, Kevin and Christopherson uh, is a research scientist in the, uh, in the department, as well as a uh, adjunct instructor for general chemistry. Uh, Dr. Filipova is our senior lecturer in organic chemistry. So she teaches organic chemistry lab uh, as well as um, some uh, organic chemistry class as well. Uh, Dr. Hao Feng is a polymer chemist and uh, uh, he teaches polymer chemistry as well as graduate level courses. Uh, Dr. Hagland uh, has been here since 2003. He's our analytical chemist. And uh, uh, Joseph Marshall is an instructor for general chemistry lab, chemistry 112 and 114 uh, labs. Uh, Dr. Lipatov has a joint appointment between chemistry and chemical and, and biological engineer. So he's a, a new faculty in the department. Uh, he's uh, mainly a material chemist and teaches general chemistry. And uh, Doc Champion is our organic chemist. Uh, he teaches organic chemistry one and two and three. Uh, Doc, Doc Smirnova is our inorganic chemist. Uh, chemist. She teaches inorganic chemistry and uh, descript descriptive inorganic chemistry as well. And he also uh, she also teaches graduate level class. Uh, myself, I. Uh, teaches, uh, I teach general chemistry and as well as graduate courses. Um, on the biology side, uh, Dr. Bars is uh, sort of sit in the middle between chemistry and biology. And uh, uh, Dr. Diman is a new faculty in the department. Uh, he's a, bio a microbiologist. Uh, he has a joint appointment between our department and the civil and environmental engineering department. Uh, Kelsey Gilchrist, and uh, she's a, a instructor, a biology instructor, and mainly teaches bio biology labs as well as the ecology uh, class. Uh, Dr. Gilly teaches uh, genetics and microbiology and molecular uh, cellular biology. Uh, Dr. Kunza uh, teaches uh, ecology and the ecology lab. She's an um, uh, ecologist. Uh, Dr. Marcius, uh, she's a uh, lecturer in the department and uh, she's a relatively new faculty as well. Uh, she teaches uh, immunology and microbiology lab and genetic labs. Uh, Dr. Rex, uh, she's a senior, uh, she's a lecturer in the department. Uh, she's also the biology program coordinator and she teaches um, uh, human anatomy, physiology, uh, as, as well as the upper level elective classes. Uh, Dr. Sunny has a joint uh, appointment between uh, our department and the uh, chemical and biological engineering department. Uh, he teaches bioinformatics uh, as well as some microbiology for uh, industrial applications. 
So that's this is uh, uh, this is our faculty. I'm going to move on to talk, uh, give you a little bit uh, quick view of the uh, facility we have. So um, right now we're sharing a building uh, between uh, with the chemical and the biological engineer. So this is called CBAC building, chemical and biological engineer and chemistry building. Um, it's sort of a U-shaped uh, building. The south one, the south one, which is the actually the old CBAC building, and they did a completely renovation uh, in 2016 when they built the new site, the north one uh, of the uh, of the CBAC building. And uh, so the south one is still uh, three floors, three levels, where the the new site is. Uh, there, there are two levels, uh, two floors there. Um, just go to uh, pretty quickly about our research labs and facilities in the lab. So we're looking at the, uh, the old Seabag uh, building, uh, third floor. Uh, we have a, a flex research lab uh, that is shared by uh, Ms. Christopherson, Dr. Fung, Dr. Manova, myself, and Dr. Lipatov. And I'm going to just show you some pictures. Uh, this is a new equipment uh, of uh, belongs to Dr. Lipatov and do electric characterization down to uh, helium temperature, okay, down to helium temperature uh, in this equipment. Uh, so this is a chemical hood in the dark room of the of the room. And this is a, a electro. Uh, this is a, a spin coater to make polymersing film. And this is a dark. So the room is a dark room. So they have red light, so you can process uh, materials that are UV sensitive. Uh, there's a FTIR and some other equipment, um, uh, a lamella hood, and uh, as well as the polymer coating. Uh, instrument, a machine there. Uh, this is sort of my equipment. Uh, this is the probe station as well as some electric characterization for, for flexible electronics. Uh, some other equipment in here, uh, fluorimeter, fluorescent spectrometer, and as well as some uh, transient photo measurement equipment. Uh, more uh, Potential stat for electrochemical uh, characterization. And again, uh, electric measurement for and mechanic measurement for uh, soft materials. And this belongs to uh, Doximir Nova. Uh, these are uh, battery testing stations and uh, for uh, multiple channels uh, battery testing. Uh, more battery testing. Uh, equipment and some supercritical CO2 uh, reactors for uh, bioprocessing. And there's a, a screen printer uh, in that uh, in this room as well. So now we're out of this room and move on to uh, South Wind uh, first, uh, first floor here, uh, which is mainly biology research lab and the uh, biology research and teaching labs. So we have one biology teaching lab and we teach general biology, uh, human anatomy and physiology in, in this lab. And sometimes we also have chemistry 112 sections uh, in this lab as well. Uh, just sort of more pictures here. Um, so we have a biology research lab shared by Dr. Bars, Dr. Diman. Uh, Dr. Ozmir is uh, she's the biomedical engineering faculty, and uh, Dr. Rox and Dr. Masius. Um, this biology research lab is equipped with cell, uh, a cell culture room and as well as the uh, a code room, okay, a code room. So basically they also have uh, equipment like uh, dishwasher and uh, a sterilized system, autoclave, as well as uh, other general uh, equipment for bacteria or genetic work. So if we uh, move on to the North one chemistry site, 
Um, this is on the first floor, and on the uh, top we have our equipment, our instrumentation room, and then we have two research labs on the on the, this side, and on the other side, uh, these are teaching labs and uh, lab preparation room. So if we look the uh, instrumentation lab, and um, this is a small room that is where our 300 megahertz uh, MR uh, is, and in that room we also have a FTIR in that in that in that research was labeled as research lab. If you look, the, now we into this instrumentation room, and this is sort of an overview picture of the instrumentation room. Uh, this is a, a UV based spectrometer. Uh, HPLC, and this is a atomic absorption spectrometer uh, we have. Uh, GC instrument, and this is GC mass uh, equipment in this room. So that's pretty much what we have in the instrumentation room. And if we move on to the research lab, uh, it's shared by a few faculty. This belongs to Dr. Hagland. Uh, he's an analytical chemist. He does a um, environmental re related research, and this is a glove box. This glove box system belongs to Dr. Smirnova, and this is the main uh, uh, main uh, system that she uses for lithium ion battery lithium ion battery characterization uh, assembly. This is a BET surface measurement instrument. Then there is some a furnace. Uh, this is sort of my equipment. This is a 3D printer to print soft materials. And then there's uh, chemical synthesis, uh, and as well as the uh, sort of general chemical synthesis uh, facility there. The stock phone set up for electrospinning, a technique to prepare very tiny fibers. And this is the setup to uh, a UV curing setup uh, he used to uh, use this equipment for dental material study. And this is a nano, uh, this is a, a profilometer to measure the film thickness. Uh, we have another uh, two glove box system with thermal evaporator uh, for uh, device fabrication. So go to the other research lab that belongs to our organic chemist. And this is two chemical hood for organic chemistry synthesis. And again, more chemical hood here and more chemicals there for organic chemistry uh, synthesis research. Um, so move on to teaching lab. i uh, just give you an overview of the teaching lab. This is our upper level chemistry teaching lab. And in this teaching lab, we actually have uh, about 14 chemical hoods, which is uh, really nice uh, for our students in the upper level uh, lab classes. This is the lab preparation room at the middle between the, between the general chemistry lab and the advanced chemistry lab. And this will be the general chemistry lab we have. So that's uh, also that's the last part here is on the second floor, we have another biology teaching lab where we teach, uh, where we teach uh, microbiology, genetics, and biochemistry. So those are just some equipment there, uh, a plate reader, and some nan nano drop equipment, as well as the floor level centrifuge there. And so some more pictures about the lab. Um, so that's sort of a department overview, and I'm going to uh, talk talk about a little bit on research highlights. Um, just this is not for all our uh, for this is not for all faculty. Uh, just some of the highlights we have here. Uh, Ms. Kirstopson is a, a instructor for Chemistry One Twelve. 
She's also a research scientist three in the uh, in the department. Her research is really related to deep underground uh, chemistry. And so this is a picture shows that she's uh, in in the under in the diesel underground lab. That is, there's a clean. She has a clean room to synthesize uh, ultra pure copper and other metals for physics experiment. So she's a. Uh, 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 electroforming uh, lead researcher for the for this Mar uh, Marijuana uh, project, and she's also the liaison for uh, to serve for Oak Ridge National Lab. Her research areas mainly on uh, on uh, develop or synthesis of ultra pure uh, metal for detector applications. Uh, she's a clean material task uh, task leader uh, for Legend, uh, as I've founded a uh, project, uh, as well as um, some other uh, projects related to deep, deep underground research. So talk to uh, Dr. Kaufman is a polymer chemist. Uh, he's an expert in electro spinning. So his research is mainly on functional materials related to uh, energy uh, storage, biomedical or filtration, as well as uh, separation uh, applications. As an example shows here, this is a very light porous material that is uh, made in his lab that uh, in collaboration with the faculty in University of Iowa uh, to study this material for, for, bone, regen for bone regeneration. Uh, Dr. Konza is our uh, ecologist. Uh, she's interested in uh, aquatic ecology, uh, water quality, and biogeochemistry. And she has large research funding from a variety of different uh, agencies. And one of her research uh, was in the headline is uh, their research to study the uh, stock dam uh, salt water level of the salt in the in the water in the water. Uh, in the stock dam water uh, in the South Dakota area. Uh, uh, Dr. Rox and Dr. Masius are our biologists. Um, their expertise are uh, in public health and some of the research highlights uh, of the research project they're involved uh, in, one is CDC One Health program. They also have a small NASA uh, a space, uh, space grant project for steady bacterial growth under microgravity condition. And both of them are working actively with, uh, on a collaborative uh, agreement with Monument Health, which is a local hospital system. Uh, Doc Sunny has a joint appointment between this department and CBE department. Uh, his research uh, is mainly on uh, extreme fire, uh, which is these are the bacteria that can survive extreme conditions such as a high acidic uh, environment or high temperature environment and use those extreme fire for uh, bioprocessing or uh, biofuels or bioproduct. He has large research project that uh, supported by NSF or NASA. Uh, right now, the active research project he's involved is about 44 million there. I'll have Dr. Smirnova. Uh, she's, her research interest is in solid state energy storage. So this is related to least, mainly related to lithium ion battery to develop more safe lithium ion, ion battery for variety of applications. So her research that right now, she has two active research uh, projects that one is supported by NSF, National Science Foundation, uh, Industry Uni University Collaborative Research Center. The other one is supported by South Dakota Governor's Research Center, both on electrochemical energy storage. So a large part of her research is how to interact, collaborate uh, with industry to 
further advance the technology related to solid state uh, batteries. So my research are, well, I have uh, along two directions. Um, in a sense, um, my research is focused on nanomaterials. So in one part of the research, we're interested in soft, spongy, and conductive materials for flexible and variable sensors. And the other part of my research is related to advanced nanomaterials for uh, sustainable chemistry or sustainability environmental applications. Um, the major research funding comes from uh, NASA EPSCOR grant, as well as the uh, Environmental Protection Agency. Um, so the next few slides are going to introduce some of our new faculty in the department. Um, Dr. Champion, uh, he's an organic chemist. Uh, his research, uh, he came here in 2019 uh, as a tenure track assistant professor. Uh, his research has, he has two active research projects. One is application of hyperpolarization, which is a very specific type of uh, magnetic properties of materials and how to use that phenomena in uh, magnetic resonance imaging for uh, biomedical applications. That project involves organic synthesis and catalyst optimization to synthesize compound with hyperpolarization properties. And the second part of that project is related to develop instrument, okay, develop instrument for the MRI, um, uh, for a magnetic resonance imaging. So that's uh, his major research project. He also has a, a sort of a side project uh, related to uh, organic synthesis for osmo protectant. Uh, the idea here is uh, his, since, idea here is synthesize of uh, some organic compounds that can absorb moisture from air. So you do not need to, uh, so, it, so it will help the, the plant grow, uh, grows uh, in, in that sense. So this is sort of a related to uh, in the ground uh, condition uh, if you can mix some of the materials uh, with the soil, it will absorb the moisture from the air. So you need you don't need as much water to uh, irrigate your uh, your farmland. Uh, Dr. Lipatov is a uh, he's a new faculty in the department. His research is mainly in two dimensional material. Okay. These are the uh, sort of unique materials. Uh, nanoscale materials have a uh, variety of uh, different applications, such as the sensing, um, all uh, interesting electric properties uh, as well. Uh, Dr. Bars, uh, his research, uh, he's a biochemist. Uh, he joins the department in fall uh, 2019. Uh, his research is mainly on lipid uh, metabolism or signaling, as well as uh, nanotechnologies related to related to drug delivery. Um, Dr. Demand has a joint appointment between this department and CEE. Uh, his research is he's a microbiologist or environmental microbiologist. So his research on really uh, uh, his, his research focuses on uh, microbial uh, corum sensing and uh, as well as the, uh, how that related to biofilm formation. Uh, the other uh, research is understanding how the significant genes or expression profiles and uh, structure and function, uh, how they contribute to biofilm formation. Uh, as well as the 2D biomaterials. So that's uh, sort of uh, research highlights. And I want to say a few words about undergraduate research in the department. 
um, we consider undergraduate research as an important part of our uh, curriculum. And uh, the department now work very closely with uh, faculty uh, to give undergraduate students more research opportunities. Uh, so what we do uh, as a department, uh, each semester, uh, each academic, each semester, we will send out the list of undergraduate research opportunities uh, to all our students. And uh, from there, they can contact faculty if they're interested in certain research project. Uh, the student can take uh, research credit, uh, Chem 498 or Bio 498. And the faculty actually are supported by the department for undergraduate research project. In the past five years, um, we have 35 chemistry majors, 10 faculty were involved in undergraduate research. Uh, they, right now, the department uh, provides up to 1,000 per year per faculty to support undergraduate research. And one of the new things that we did in fall uh, 20, uh, for last year is to uh, have a more day celebration, uh, which is uh, sh really showcase the research in, in our department. And this is what we did last year. And we had a keynote speaker uh, from POET. And uh, then we have a, a research symposium by our undergraduate student, graduate student. So that's related to uh, undergraduate research. Um, so uh, the next I'm going to talk a little bit about outreach activities we offered uh, in our department. Um, so this is just a slide, um, some photos of our students take uh, different uh, internships during the summer at the different locations. And so particularly our biology students, they, uh, they have a uh, our students have uh, opportunities to go do internship in the summer, as well as undergraduate research uh, during the summer as well. Um, for example, last summer in my research group, I actually offered uh, four undergraduate students from the department uh, did undergraduate research, uh, summer research with me. Uh, Student organization, uh, chemistry side, we have a ACS student chapter. Uh, they are very active in all kinds of activities. And these are some photos here. And uh, this is where they went to peer uh, that I think the, there's a mind stay for, for legislature uh, at, the, uh, at the state capitol. And this is a picture of the student with actual governor norm. Uh, this is 2019-ish, I believe. Here's a picture that uh, our ACS students served ice cream, uh, liquid nitrogen ice cream during the uh, football game. And then the last picture is uh, the chemistry magic show, which is the uh, our student chapter offer chemistry magic shows on a variety of occasions uh, through the year. Uh, on the biology uh, side, we have a, a student-run biological professional society, and this is uh, relatively new. Uh, they're interested in uh, STEM outreach demonstration for local schools, uh, as well as uh, how to contribute to the, uh, to the local community. For health science students, we have a, a future health science professions. Uh, professionals and they do a lot of outreach activities or you know uh, visit local uh, clinics or medical uh, facilities and this is an uh, example that they went to a hospital to offer some Hollywood fun for for uh, youngsters in hospital Um, this is our more day event. So the more day event uh, last started uh, last year. The more day event actually had uh, had two components. One is on um, uh, research showcase. The other one is uh, 
uh, we invite local middle school students uh, on campus and do and they do hands-on experiments uh, in chemistry teaching lab and biology teaching lab. This is just the uh, in the ballroom. They again chemistry students do the magic show for the uh, for the middle school kids. Uh, the department offers two summer camps. Uh, one is a pre-med at MICE or uh, pre-health uh, science, science camp. This is started last year and we're going to offer this summer camp this year as well. The other summer camp is a green chemistry camp and uh, this has been offered in the past five or six years at least. And so this will continue to offer the green chemistry uh, summer camp uh, from the department. Um, so just examples for uh, outreach in engagement of our faculty. Uh, Ms. Christopherson uh, gave a, a TED talk uh, in TED Rapid, talk about the deep underground lab and her research in, uh, in the lab. And this, Picture here shows Dr. Ox and uh, uh, Margaret Smallbrook, which is the uh, uh, safety or uh, environmental and uh, uh, health manager of, of, the, of the Mines campus. And she's actually graduated from chemistry program at South Dakota Mines. And uh, this is sort of two years ago at the beginning of the COVID. And they talk about how, how do you, to wash your hands. And Dr. Ox and Dr. Marcius give uh, quite a few uh, radio talks and uh, video, uh, media talks about COVID uh, related uh, related issues. Okay. And these are some uh, summer, uh, just some outreach activities we have, uh, we offer to the uh, community. And this is Dr. Newman, uh, he's a research scientist and sort of show his uh, better research. We'll have Dr. Sonia and Dr. Man uh, in their research lab. So that's um, a quick summary of our uh, outreach activities. And, I'll, and so at the end, I want to spend a few uh, minutes to talk about some of the future plan we have for the department. And so, uh, since I became the uh, interim department head, uh, we are uh, working on and to update our department mission. And this is what the mission we have um, up to date. Uh, so we're interested, our mission is really to uh, foster the next generation of scientists. And we want them to have a solid foundation in chemistry and biology. And uh, they, uh, as well as the intellectual or technical skills for successful, successful careers in science and technology. Um, then the last part of what we want our students to be, um, they have a conscious mind to engage in global and uh, societal challenges. Um, some of the core values, we talk about uh, excellence. And uh, so the, as a department, we really work hard for excellence in education. And we're geared up in more research and teaching. So innovation will be a part of our department value. And uh, they, as equally important is how to engage and serve the uh, campus and local community. Um, we also uh, developed some strategic uh, education and research focus areas. And these are, um, these are the areas that um, will be able to hold this department and programs together. Uh, so one area is in the health science and biotechnology. And this is involved pathways to a medical career for our students, uh, biochemistry and molecular biology, as well as the biotechnology. And the other uh, focus area is related to sustainable science and technology uh, this is related to environmental science or uh, environmental chemistry and green energy and material chemistry as well. 
um, some of the uh, action plans for uh, for uh, the next five years. Uh, we would like to modernize our curriculum, uh, particularly labs, uh, as well as some new courses, uh, develop some new courses to align uh, with our strategic focus areas uh, of the department. And we want to continue foster and support undergraduate research and consider that is the consider that is a strength of this department and of our programs. Uh, we're uh, push for uh, grow, growth of externally funded research in those strategic focus areas. And hopefully by uh, hiring new faculty in a strategic way, and we can form a cohort, uh, be able to uh, go together and to seek externally uh, funded research. Um, one of the goal in the next five years, uh, we would like to establish, establish a PhD program in uh, applied chemical and biological sciences. And that is aligned with some of the research efforts in the department. Uh, we feel that as a department, now we have a we have the critical mass in terms of the tenure and tenure track faculty uh, should be able to sustain a PhD program. And um, to sustain, to continue our research, uh, to develop, to grow our research, we also would like to engage with uh, chemical, biotech, uh, biotechnology and healthcare industries to support our students and to support technology transfer as well as the research in the, in the department. Um, if you look some of the near term goal for, for the next uh, physical year, uh, so this is sort of I presented during our budget hearing, um, we're going to complete our, hopefully, we, I think we will get approval for specialization in green chemistry. And I think that specialization is going to align well with the uh, master program we have and future PhD program uh, we will propose. On the biology side, we're actually going to explore a specialization in environmental biology. And that is, again, aligned with some of the research, uh, some of the focus area in this department. Now, other things related to per professional health sciences. We will continue to develop, uh, improve the curriculum for professional health sciences. Uh, on the general chemistry side, we're open to, uh, we move to uh, open source textbook. Uh, and the labs, uh, we move to uh, set up a TA oriented or taught uh, lab classes. Uh, we're going to continue to grow our grand sustainable chemistry master program. On the research side, uh, uh, one of the focus area in the next year is to support our tenure track faculty and then to continue to grow our, our research. Uh, for the outreach and engagement, uh, we, will, we will continue our more day event. Uh, we had that last first time last fall and it was uh, very successful. And so we will continue that annual event, a more day celebration. Um, some other things that uh, we have been, uh, we want to work on is to work with Kyra to get more connected with uh, alumni. And I, th I think in the past that um, you know, we sent out uh, Christmas letters and, but I, I would like to hear more from uh, our uh, al alumni about this department and uh, uh, get connected more uh, with, with the alumni. And based on that, we want to explore the feasibility of a departmental advisory board. And some of the audience, if you're interested in uh, get involved, uh, please contact me. And as a department, we have been talking about a departmental advisory board uh, for some years. And I think it's a time uh, we take some action uh, in, in that direction. And you know, recruiting and enrollment uh, increase increase of enrollment always uh, important for us.
So that's pretty much what I want to, uh, the overview of our department. Uh, if you uh, want to contact, if you want to contact us and uh, these are the contact information, uh, you can always call, uh, call me or call Deb uh, if you have any question, uh, want to know more about this department and uh, email uh, always works as well. Okay, um, so that's the end of my uh, presentation and I'm happy to take any question uh, people uh, people have. Thank you, Dr. Zhu. Um, so yes, if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat and I'll watch for them. Or um, you can also put them in the Q&A. So very informative. Your, your department does a lot of really cool things. Thank so you. It's always good to hear. A lot of cool research is going on, that's for sure. Thanks. And then um, I think let's put just in case I know, uh, let's put your email. Can you put your email in the chat yep. for everyone just in case they did have any questions and want to reach out more, yeah. um, more to you? So email and phone number 605-694-2447. Thank you, yeah. appreciate it. Oh, here, let me switch it around. That, there we go. Yeah, so thank you, yes, really appreciate it. Um, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free, after the presentation, please feel free to email Dr. Zhu. I'm sure he'd be happy to answer them. Um, as always, we are looking for feedback on our events. Um, and if you have any other topics, specifically if there's anything that Dr. Zhu um, mentioned that you would like to hear more on, um, I'm gonna drop a survey in the chat. Um, we're always looking for feedback and you can put that in there. And then I will add that to my list of topics that we're coming up. Um, the goal is to plan out all of 22. So with that being said, um, we're still kind of working on a presenter. But the next topic we're pretty close to having one solidified is going to be March 17th at 11 o'clock a.m. over Zoom. And that is our digital lunch and learn. And we're going to be talking about green hydrogen. Um, so we're going to be working on that one. And then the next department update for those of you who are interested is we are going to be hearing from the mining department and Dr. Hall is going to be giving that update. So I'll drop the registration links for those in the chat. So if you have any questions or like to register for those, we'd be happy to have you. Yes. Okay, and well, to be mindful of everyone's time. So thank you for attending today's department update. I really appreciate it. Um, again, this event will be recorded and we'll up, I'll get it uploaded to the YouTube channel to view. Um, so I really appreciate everyone's time. Have a wonderful weekend and enjoy. Join the nice weather if it's nice where you're at. So <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.